What if everything you thought you knew about cancer is wrong? What if cancer cells didn't just grow, they're actually fueled by sugar and a specific amino acid? And what if one simple vitamin could literally make or break your body's ability to fight it? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to two leading scientists who are saying what mainstream medicine won't, that cancer may be a metabolic disease and that vitamin D3 is the most criminally overlooked cancer treatment of all time. Stick around in this video. You're going to learn some life-changing stuff for you and your family. And I'm going to give you some commentary on these videos, but how you can apply this understanding that we uncover today to your life now, so you can actually prevent cancer and live a long and healthy life because these principles are super important. Let's dive into today's video. First off, if you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm a naturopathic doctor and the founder of the Fit Father and Fit Mother Projects, leading health and weight loss programs for busy parents over 40. I've personally helped over 60,000 parents in over 100 countries transform. And I want to shoot this video today to use my platform to amplify this powerful message about cancer. Because right now there are millions of people struggling and cancer rates are exploding. And I'm not here to shoot this video to say that cancer is some simple topic and this is the end all be all. There is so much complexity to cancer as you probably know and suspect. Yet, I do feel like what I'm gonna share with you today through these videos and these researchers is powerful and is going to guide the way we approach and treat cancer into the future. And I also wanna say this hits home for me personally. The reason I even got into health and fitness is as my own dad got cancer. He died when he was 42 years old. I was just nine at the time. And through that tragedy, it inspired me to study health and fitness. So in a very powerful way, the reason I'm creating this video is because my family was touched by cancer and now I'm so passionate about health. Okay, so in terms of the causes of cancer, it is absolutely multifactorial. There are toxins, there are genetic causes, there are poor lifestyle choices like smoking. We're now learning though that cancer is a metabolic disease in a certain sense, meaning when you are overweight, obese, you have dysregulated blood sugars and you're being bombarded by all this unhealthy stress and stuff, it can cause your mitochondria to not function well and as a result, alter the metabolic pathways and either fuel or even create cancer growth. Now, it's been known for a long time that cancer cells have a different metabolism. They ferment glucose for energy and they create acidic byproducts. This was discovered by German physician Otto Warburg. Now, this understanding is being expanded by Dr. Thomas Seafried, who I'm going to show you a video of in just a second, who has discovered that cancer cells also ferment an amino acid called glutamine. And before I show you this clip, I want you to know that Dr. Thomas Seafried is the real deal. He is a professor of biology at Boston College. He has over 150 different peer-reviewed articles, mostly focused on cancer. Listen to this clip, and you're going to see what I mean. With Otto Warburg, he defined the nature of cancer, late 20s, early 30s, through the 40s, um, that cancer was a disease of mitochondrial function, energy metabolism. And the Warburg effect is now recognized as one of the uh, underlying features of almost every cancer. What Otto Warburg didn't know uh, is that they, cancer cells can ferment an amino acid called glutamine, and the pathways for that were not known in his time. We just published a paper in, in ASN Neuro defining and showing how this other fuel, an amino acid, glutamine, can also be a, a fermentable product through a pathway in the mitochondria. Therefore, this uncovering or identifying the missing link in Warburg's central theory. When mitochondria are damaged, with this, which, when, when, when any cell is damaged energetically, uh, acutely, the cell will die. Um, acute energy failure will kill cells. Cancer cells have chronic energy failure. And as the result of chronic energy failure, they gradually upregulate ancient metabolic pathways that existed in all organisms on the planet before oxygen came into the atmosphere. So cancer cells simply fall back on ancient pathways of fermentation. And in the human body, that fermentation pathway it uses glucose or sugar to uh, generate uh, energy and metabolites for the cell to grow. So 
Warburg said all cancer cells are a, 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 the result of a damage to this respiratory capacity, step one. Step two is the ability of that cell to upregulate ancient fermentation pathways. Interestingly enough, the regulators of ancient fermentation pathways are what we call now oncogenes. So the oncogenes are facilitators of fermentation pathways. So you can put together the whole uh, concept of what cancer actually is. But Warburg did not know that there were other fermentable fuels. And that led to tremendous uh, uncertainty as to whether Warburg was correct or not. Cells are taking in oxygen, they're not using glucose, and yet they're surviving, which means that Warburg was wrong. The problem is the oxygen is not linked to, into respiration and they're burning another fermentable fuel, which he didn't know about. Now we know about that. It's glutamine and that's the missing link. My initial reaction to this video is wow, because conventional oncology has ignored the importance of nutrition for the longest time. It's all been about chemotherapeutic cocktails, different immunotherapies, and really driving down to really specific pharmaceutical interventions. And I'm not gonna poo-poo those. We've discovered a lot of powerful stuff. Yet, at the root, when we understand that cancer has these unique metabolic parameters, that it likes to ferment glucose and now glutamine, we can restrict these fuel sources and help fight cancer. And the first thing I wanna say here is just because cancer ferments glucose and glutamine doesn't make these things bad for normal healthy metabolism. It just means in the treatment of cancer, we may find that the best course forward for most people is to be on a low glucose, AKA ketogenic diet that also has glutamine restriction. This is also a good warning for everyone to maintain your metabolic health. Because if you're overweight, pre-diabetic, we're probably gonna find that being in an unhealthy metabolic condition can lead to the rise of these cancers. At the very least, create an inflammatory situation where different kinds of toxins and your DNA can get easily damaged and then cancer can develop and then rapidly progress because your blood glucose is all over the place. So the tenets of a healthy lifestyle to maintain insulin sensitivity and good glucose regulation is a balanced natural diet. I recommend at Fit Father and Fit Mother a lower carb diet, but it doesn't have to necessarily be keto. You should be doing exercise every single day strength training a few times per week, focusing on sleep and stress reduction and fasting and hydration. This is the kind of stuff that maintains metabolic health and will likely help you prevent cancer. And on the glutamine front, this is a very important amino acid that's good for health. If you have digestive issues, oftentimes some of the good interventions are giving glutamine powder. It's good for muscle repair, it's good for immune function, but in cancer, it's not ideal. And I wanna bring this up because I think we're still discovering what's the best kind of nutritional intervention for many cancers, and it may be specific to certain kinds. I do wanna say that some of the best animal protein sources are also high in glutamine. So beef, eggs, chicken, even tofu and tempeh from the plant kingdom, these are all high in glutamine. Some lower glutamine protein sources are things like whitefish, turkey, hemp, chia, and pea proteins. So that might not be optimal for your everyday diet, but if you have cancer, I would suspect we're gonna find in the future, not medical advice, that having a lower protein diet to restrict total glutamine and then focusing on protein sources that uh, are lower in glutamine naturally would be good. And this is an interesting dance with cancer because you don't wanna to give too much protein, but you also wanna give enough that you're not muscle wasting. And just look one more time at these two graphs. This is the increase of metabolic disease and dysfunction charted through obesity, pre-diabetes, you can see it rising and you see cancer rising with it. These things are obviously correlated and I would say there's probably even a causative link that we're gonna find out soon. So that's the first video. The next one is equally important. We're gonna be talking about the connection between vitamin D3 and cancer. Now, this next video is from another esteemed scientist, Dr. Angus Dalgleish. He is a professor of oncology at St. George's Hospital Medical School, University of London a renowned clinical oncologist and medical researcher. He is best known for his groundbreaking work in HIV AIDS research, having co-discovered the CD4 receptor as the HIV binding site. He has over 300 peer reviewed publications. He is a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, has been involved in the development of countless cancer immunotherapies and vaccines. So this man's words carry some serious weight. Listen to what he says in this interview about vitamin D3 and cancer treatment.
Just chatting before we came on, we talked about, about the importance of vitamin D, which ties in with the, the talks on David Grimes yesterday. Mm. Uh, j j just briefly, how important is it to be vitamin D replete when treating cancers? Well, it, it, it is so important that it, it is pointless, I believe, treating cancer patients until you've got their vitamin D level high or... Uh, supplement it with D3 or calciferol. Uh, it is so important, and the literature is replete out there. I mean, the uh, since we first uh, s uh, spotted it with regards to immunotherapy, why do some people fail and other people respond? And we spent two years, or spent lots of uh, money on looking at everything going. And then the vitamin D test becomes available to yeah. us, and it's immediately obvious. If you've got a low vitamin D, it's a waste of time giving them immunotherapy. So, and, so sophisticated immunotherapy treatments, some people respond, some people don't respond, mm -hmm. and you find out it's the non-responders have got low levels of vitamin D and the responders have got adequate levels of vitamin D. C absolutely. Can it be that simple? It is that simple. And it revolutionised our treatment because we measured everybody's vitamin D before going on any treatment. We got it to a decent level. And that's why our randomised study using uh, IMM 101, which is mm. the E-kill bacteria we're talking about, that's why that trial showed a benefit. Look, here are the simple biological facts. All of your white blood cells, your immune cells, have vitamin D3 receptors. They also have melatonin receptors too. You think that's an accident? And what were we instructed to do a few years ago when immune health was particularly important for people? Stay indoors, don't get sunshine, stay stressed, work your ass off, and eat devoid foods that are ultra processed and don't have any of this good nutrition. That is a recipe for fueling cancer, for potentially creating it in some cases too, and for wrecking your health. Vitamin D3 is so critical, and many of you watching this video could be getting more into your diet. Now, here is the normal range for vitamin D3. It is considered adequate to have 20 to 50 nanograms per milliliter, insufficient to have 12 to 19, and deficient to have less than 12. And what we find from certainly people who undergo cancer therapies is if they're deficient in D3, they get poor outcomes. We see the same things in all kinds of infections. Those that fare worse are those that have low vitamin D3 status. So this is something to take seriously. And a vitamin D3 paired with vitamin K2 supplement is a really safe and effective way to ensure you're getting enough. There are long-term studies showing that taking 3,000 to 5,000 IUs is safe for most people. And if you want to be really precise, make sure you get a vitamin D3 test a few times per year, especially during the winter times when you may not getting enough sunshine. And I also want to say we've really villainized the sun. And I understand that getting excess UV radiation can be damaging for your skin and cause photo aging. And if you get burned, it can absolutely predispose you to cancer. So there's some irony here. That being said, getting outside in midday sunshine every day for 10 to 30 minutes Enough that you fi feel the warmth and you actually enjoy it and you don't have any repulsion to getting out of the sun. The second your body's had enough sunshine, it's like, I've had enough. You wanna go to the shade. There's an inherent feedback mechanism your body has. And it's really cool that you can get a lot of vitamin D3 from the sun. In fact, I have a little device that I measure out here in Arizona. And right now in midday sunshine around two o'clock, I can make around 50 IUs of vitamin D per minute. So I stay out there for like 10 to 20 minutes. I'm getting a good bolus of D3. I also think it's a good idea to eat vitamin D3 rich foods. This is like cod liver oil. This is cold water fatty fish like salmon, sardines, and herring, egg yolks, liver of all types. And there's certainly some plant-based sources of D like mushrooms, but they're not as bioavailable as the animal-based sources. So for me, I get a lot of sunshine and I eat these foods on occasion. This is something good to know. I also wanna say that stress tends to decrease your vitamin D3 stores. There are many proposed mechanisms for this. Some are that high cortisol levels prevents the conversion of inactive D3 to the active form. Others suggest that high stress can actually inhibit the absorption of vitamin D through the gut. I'll tell you this, one of the greatest things that relaxes my system is getting outside, getting some sun, taking some breaths through my nose and breathing some fresh air. 
So I think there's just such a powerful effect to reconnecting to nature to support your vitamin D3 levels. This is really foundational, but kind of simple stuff, right? Get your vitamin D3. Make sure that you're giving your body the right kinds of fuels and inputs to support your metabolism. And for those that are unhealthy, carrying around excess weight, it's not just an aesthetic thing. It's not just even an inflammation thing. This might be literally damaging your mitochondria and leading to a progression into cancer that could be fatal. So I hope you're starting to draw these connections. The science is still young. I'm not saying that we know definitively that metabolic dysfunction is causing cancer. We certainly know that cancer expresses metabolic dysfunction and that it feeds off of glucose and glutamine and that we can actually treat cancer more effectively by doing nutritional intervention. Now, if you watch this video to the end, I want to give you this little Easter egg too. You may have an intuition or you've read some stuff online or seen some videos about EMFs, non-native electromagnetic fields that might be harmful for health. Things like 5G, which is being installed in terms of small cell towers everywhere, and then inside your cell phones. Well, I did a deep presentation on this that I'm gonna link inside the description. It is a hour lecture on this. And one of my proposed ideas is the reason that EMFs can lead to increases in cancer is actually because they cause mitochondrial dysfunction. We know mitochondria do not work well when they're bathed in non-native EMF. And so even though the EMFs that come from your phone and from your Wi-Fi router are in the microwave range, they're not high powered enough to directly damage DNA. If they damage your mitochondria, alter metabolism, then a secondary effect could be the rise of cancer if this causative link is established. I know at the very least, these non-native EMF fields will decrease your energy production and give you the feeling of anxiety. So if you wanna learn more, check out my video in the description. It is absolutely free and there's a really great Google document I created for that as well. My service to you and your family because I wanna educate you, help you return to natural living and give you the tools and the support and the friendship to live a long and healthy life. If you're liking this video and finding it very valuable, please hit the like and the subscribe button. It helps me out tremendously and helps spread my work and health information to thousands of more people. It is a small act that you can do that is a massive service for me. So please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. I publish new videos every single week and by liking and subscribing, you're telling the algorithm that you'd like to see more of my videos, which I know will really benefit your health. And finally, if you're loving this free YouTube content, then you will be blown away by the quality of my actual paid programs. I have a six week program called Foundations that hands you my nutrition plan, daily workouts, mindset and motivation, ongoing health education that will help you build sustainable health habits around nutrition, sleep, exercise, hydration that will serve you for the rest of your life. Six weeks to get you in amazing shape, help you release fat, build muscle, and get so rock solid in your habits. If you'd like support, you can check out my Foundations program. We have versions for men and for women. They launch every single week, these six weeks programs. So check those out in the description. And if you still want to feel things out and you do want to join my mailing list to get a copy of these videos when they're mailed out, as well as my Sunday newsletter, you can get my free one week plan that's linked in the description. And I'll send all this to your email as well. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. I hope you found this video valuable. Share it with somebody if, you, if they're currently going through cancer or you just want to help them live long and healthy. This can really change the world. I'm so grateful to these amazing scientists and to the internet because with all the things we have going on today, at least we have the benefit of access to powerful information like this and the ability to share with one another and love on one another. I'm feeling inspired by that today.